Start the music when, when we Left and right aren't equal.
evening, everyone. My name is Janet Spriggs, and it is my privilege and honor to serve as the president here at Forsyth Technical Community College. I'd like to welcome all of you here this evening to the pinning ceremony for our associate degree in nursing students. We are so excited to be here, to have your families here, and to celebrate all that you have accomplished. And trust me, it's a lot to becoming a nurse. I wanted to share with all of you something that um, someone told me recently that I think is very appropriate for this evening's celebration. I was talking with the chair of our board of trustees, Paul Wiles, who worked in healthcare administration for more than 40 years before he retired as the president and CEO of Novant Health. And I want to share with you how Paul described nurses to me. He called nurses the single most important resource in healthcare. The single most important resource in healthcare. Not a surgeon, not some piece of million dollar equipment, although I'm sure those are very important parts of healthcare. He said the single most important resource in healthcare is nurses. That's what all of you are doing. That is the career that you are embarking upon. You've all made it through so very much. I have not been where you have been, but I know from watching nursing students for more than 25 years that it is a long journey and it's a hard journey. Earning your degree is difficult under normal circumstances, but you all have chosen to even do it during a pandemic. So you are now accomplished and ready to join the workforce. You're ready to provide an essential service and being the most important part of so many people's lives and days and their lives. I'm so proud of you, we all are, so very proud. We can't wait to see what all of you will go out and accomplish now. And before I offer you one more congratulations, I also want to thank you especially for persevering, for showing up for your labs and your clinicals, working through online learning, persevering through the normal rigor of a nursing program and through the extra disruption of a global pandemic. Thank you for sticking with us, for sticking with your program because we all need you you are more important than ever before. Our communities need you. So truly, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you. You will continue to make Forsyth Tech a place of promise. You demonstrate how we are that place of promise. We have a wonderful and very special and moving program planned for you tonight to honor the outstanding achievements of all of our amazing new nurses. So let me say one more time, Congratulations. Thank you. Good evening. I am Renee Harrison, and it's my pleasure and honor to serve as the department chair for the Associate Nursing Program for the Paul and Wiles School of Nursing. On the behalf of the School of Nursing and the Joyce E. Glass Associate Degree Nursing Program, I am delighted to welcome all of you to the pennant ceremony for the fall 2021 graduating class. I would like to express appreciation to all of those at Forsyth Tech, our president, Dr. Spriggs, our Vice President, Chief Academic Officer and Provost, Dr. Surratt, board members, our executive leadership team, scholarship donors, our interim dean, Ms. Tammy Beck, our associate nurse and faculty, our staff, and all who have supported these wonderful students during their education program. Graduates, this is your night to celebrate. 
a great accomplishment with your family, friends, and faculty. Tonight's pen and ceremony is a rich tradition in the health sciences field. In nursing, the tradition has continued for over 1,000 years. We are delighted and honored to continue this rich condition, this rich tradition tonight for pending in our nursing program. We are also excited to witness the pivotal transition of our graduates from students to the professional nurse. Graduates, we are honored and delighted to be here on tonight for your hard work, your dedication, and what you represent here on tonight. This is the first time in the history of the Associate Degree Nursing Program that we have had all of our students in our 213 course complete the course successfully. Give yourselves a hand. <laughs> we are so proud of you, and I would like to thank the faculty for all of your hard work through all of the courses, through all of your experiences throughout the pandemic and throughout your journey here at Forsyth Tech. You have completed many hours in lab, clinical, simulation, study groups, and tonight we celebrate you as you launch into your professional place in the nursing profession. In the words of Abraham Lincoln, the best way to predict the future is to create it. Congratulations, graduates. Job well done on creating a future for yourself, and job well done for what you will do in the community, how you will serve your patients, family members, and all the things that you will do. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce to you Tracy Reeves, our class president. Good evening, everyone. We did it. I would like to thank Dr. Janet Spriggs for being here with us tonight. She's our Forsyth Tech president. I would also like to thank Dr. Surratt and the interim dean of the Health Services Division, Ms. Tamara Beck, for joining us this evening. Thank you to the Associate Degree Nursing Chair, Ms. Renee Harrison and the faculty and staff of Forsyth Tech's Paul M. Wiles School of Nursing. Without your dedication, guidance, knowledge, none of us would be here tonight, so thank you. I would like to recognize Ms. Lacey Moore, our faculty pinning advisor. Thank you for all of your hard work in organizing tonight's event. The words thank you do not feel adequate when it comes to those who have supported us throughout our nursing school journey. So please join me by standing and giving a round of applause to our family and friends who supported, cheered, and encouraged us along the way. <clears throat> Thank you. When I think about the Associate Degree Nursing Perk class of December 2021, one word comes to mind. I'm going to mimic Ms. Spriggs and say perseverance. There are so many memories that could be shared about a nursing school experience, but that would take way too long. So here's just a few that come to mind. Miss Hunt. <laughs> Stand, standing in front of our classroom on day one of lab, telling us we know this much, <laughs> right? And by pinning, we're gonna know this much. <laughs> and then how can we forget Miss Marquette? Miss Marquette's infectious positivity and her personality, you know, her getting in front of us and doing splits and, <laughs> and, you know, just getting us to get up and dance and have a good time right before an exam, that got us through those first few exams, help us get our nerves out. So thank you for that, Miss Marquette. We do appreciate that. Nursing school is difficult enough without any additional challenges, but we did it even during a pandemic. From in-class to online learning, this transition proved to be challenging for everyone but we overcame. Even while most of us were at home dealing with 
online learning with our children. Some of us were having babies, but we did it, guys. We came to the end, and all 54 of us are here tonight. When we could not return to the clinical setting, vSIM became our clinical setting. I know we are all still grateful today that it was virtual simulation environment since some of us managed to kill <laughs> our fictional patients <laughs> while simply performing a physical assessment. <laughs> I am guilty. None of us ever thought that arts and crafts would be a part of nursing school, but it is. So how many nursing school graduates can say they learned how to insert a urinary catheter while learning online. We had to be inventive, putting our arts and crafts skills to the test. I know several of us use water bottles, positioned between two pillows, trying to keep our phones and laptops at the perfect angle <laughs> while maintaining sterile technique <laughs> so our instructors could evaluate our skills while on FaceTime, Microsoft Teams, and Zoom. Talk about creativity, right? I wanna thank the fifth semester faculty for continuing to push us to the finish line. That struggle was real. I want to thank Ms. Tate for her words of encouragement we needed to hear to get through those last few exams. Thank you, Ms. Tate. Through the hours of lecture, studying, labs, clinical rotations, we remained dedicated and committed to excellence. When we finally put our knowledge and skills together with understanding, connecting those dots to provide ex exceptional patient care, we finally see that it was worth it. I would like to read a quote by the soccer player, Pele. Success is no accident. It is hard work perseverance, learning, studying, sacrifice, and most of all, love of what you are doing and le or learning to do. I cannot think of a better quote that summarizes the December 2021 Associate Degree Nursing class. I would now like to introduce our guest speaker, Ms. Amanda Goad. Ms. Goad is a graduate from the Associate Degree Nursing program here at Forsyth Tech. She obtained her bachelor's degree in nursing from Winston-Salem State University and her master's degree in nursing from Duke University. She is a, now a family nurse practitioner. Ms. Goad is where we, has, has been where we are today. She is a testament that our education does not have to stop here. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Amanda Goad. Thank you guys so much. Greetings, nursing graduates, faculty, friends, and family, and congratulations, guys. This is an incredible moment. Thank you so much for letting me be here and be a part of this. Um, as, as, um, as she alluded to, I was here 18 years ago in my pinning ceremony, December 2003. I feel like I'm technically a grown-up now in my nursing career, right? Um, but since that time, I have had many um, opportunities to continue my learning, my education, and I've had some great opportunities for experience. Um, the one thing I did shortly after my pinning ceremony, I got married and I had a kid. And when he was six months old, it seemed like a great time to go back to school and get a bachelor's degree, right? because we do, we do silly things like that, I guess. Um, when he was a toddler, it seemed like the appropriate time to apply and get a master's degree. So that's what we did. But um, probably like you guys, um, you've had people ask you, how did you do all of this? How did you go to school? How did you persevere during a pandemic? How did you manage your family and responsibilities and press through and graduate? I had people ask me that. And I've told a lot of those people the first degree, the associate's degree in nursing that you have obtained, was probably the hardest degree that I got. Guys, when I started <laughs> this program, I didn't know any. I did know, like this much, right? Like what um, the lady said in the lab. When I went to my first semester, um, my uh, first lecture, I remember the instructor talking about measuring something in sonometers. It was 10 sonometers, 15 sonometers. And I was freaking out because I did not know what a sonometer was. I thought I was gonna have to go find a ruler that had a sonometer on it. I, I looked at my syllabus, there was nothing about it anywhere on there that we had to have a sonometer ruler. Come to find out, it's a centimeter, guys. It's the same thing, <laughs> but I had no idea. Um, thank you instructors for taking people who know so little 
and preparing us in such a short amount of time to be ready to step into the workforce. You guys are amazing. Um, so by hard work and the grace of God, I graduated and went on and continued my education. I eventually graduated from Duke University, which is one of the best schools, nursing schools in the nation. Um, so I was really proud of that accomplishment. Um, I, I got a, a job as a nurse practitioner in the hospital, and on my first day, uh, I'm wearing my white lab coat and my name badge with all of my brand new initials on it, Amanda Goad, RN, MSN, FMPC, and feeling really proud of myself. They even gave me a pager to carry, which was, you know, making me feel pretty important, right? I mean, you can't call me. I'm a provider, but you can page me if you need something. <laughs> and uh, so I was on my first shift and, and feeling pretty proud of myself and uh, got a page looked down, it was one of the nurses and they needed me. Turns out that one of her patients was having some problems with his hemorrhoids and I uh, used that nursing degree I was so proud of to put in a prescription order for some preparation H. That was my <laughs> first prescription I ever put in with my new license. Nursing will keep you humble, you know. But when I was thinking tonight about what I should say. Um, I was thinking about how I could, you know, maybe talk to you guys about keeping your passion and, and don't get burned out because, I, I mean, it's so easy. We, we push so hard. The, the hours are long. We deal with a lot of stuff. And I thought, well, that would be great. I could talk to you about, um, I could talk to you about, uh, what was the other thing I was going to talk to you guys about? Oh, um, about continuing to learn this next year, continuing to, to step into those challenging assignments. Don't just take the easy ones or try to get the easy shifts. Step in and, and take those difficult assignments. Nobody really expects you to know a lot this first year anyway. It's perfect time. Ask a lot of questions. But then I thought, no, there's one thing, if I really had to summarize all to this one thing that would keep you passionate, it would keep you wanting to learn more. It would, it would create opportunities for you. And that one thing is compassion. Compassion is when you genuinely care for people. Compassion is when you go beyond just hearing what someone is saying and you lean in and you're really listening. And I promise people know when you're listening and they'll trust you. Compassion will make you the best patient advocate Compassion will help you answer that call bell one more time. Compassion will help you talk to that patient's family again and answer more questions again or page that doctor again. Compassion will help you to move in a truly healing way. You know, if we've learned anything over these last two years is that medicine doesn't have all the answers all the time. So what are you going to do when there's no more treatments? and the medication's not working? What are you gonna do when there's another illness that comes onto the scene that we've never heard of? Compassion will help you to move in a healing way when medicine has no cure. I would like to share with you a very personal story. Um, my sister just had a baby girl 10 days ago, and she wrote, um, a little note that she wanted me to read to you guys tonight specifically. So I'm going to read this. Um, After an easy and uneventful pregnancy, my husband and I welcomed a beautiful baby girl into the world. The labor was easy. The mood was joyful. Our Christmas gift was coming early. But shortly after delivery, the staff observed some issues with our little one's breathing and her oxygen levels were dipping quite low. While our hearts were panicked, the staff remained calm, carefully assessing, managing the situation. Before long, it was determined that our baby would need surgery and a stay in the NICU. She had a diagnosis of a rare birth defect. As a new mother, I went from celebrating the joyous birth of our child to experiencing grave concern for her very life in only a matter of hours. As you can imagine, the emotions were like a landslide threatening to swallow me. But the nurses were there. 
The nurses were in the delivery room to assess a problem. They were in mother baby to catch me as I received the diagnosis, and they were in the NICU to care, comfort, and sometimes just to talk. Through each department, one trait was shared, compassion. Each nurse we encountered offered hope, diligence in providing the very best care, and a conversation for a mom who has spent hours at the bedside with her baby. Through this hard time that eventually does have a happy ending, the nursing staff was a godsend. Doctors and surgeons are amazing, and without them, our daughter wouldn't be alive. But nurses, they were the ones in the trenches with us. They were comforting a hungry baby that cries for hours and celebrating the day-to-day -day miracles, no matter how small. Nurses are the ones that lightened our burden and brightened our day. Although I may never see most of them again, I owe them the deepest gratitude from the depths of my heart. Now, of course, I know you guys weren't there when this was happening. I know you weren't there in Mother and Baby. I know you weren't there that night in NICU. But this is your calling. This is what you're stepping into, and this is what you will offer your patients. Tonight, I want to challenge you to walk the path that's in front of you. Your story may look different from mine, and I surely would never tell anyone to do things the way that I do them. But there is a plan for your life if you're daring enough to take the steps to get there. I'm really proud of you all. And I don't know you, most of you personally, but I know the sacrifice it takes to get here. Your life will never be the same after tonight because you've unlocked a door and are stepping into another world of opportunity. From this moment forward, you will have choices and opportunities that you've never had before. What you do with it's up to you. And the last thing I want to encourage you with tonight is to go out there and be a light. Be hope to somebody. In a world that has become darker than ever, people are afraid. They're tired. They're hurting. Step out in this new nursing role as a beacon of hope. Guys, you've gone through nursing school. Nursing school. Okay, there's a reputation that goes along with that, and I think you would agree it's earned that reputation, right? You've gone through nursing school in the middle of some of the hardest times in recent history. You guys can do hard things, obviously. So maybe, just maybe, you were called for a time like this. Thank you, guys. Good evening. Graduates, finally the moment that you have worked and waited for. Family and friends, it is indeed my honor and my pleasure to present to you on tonight the Paul M. Wiles School of Nursing, Joyce E. Glass Associate Degree Nursing Programs Fall Graduating Class. Graduates, would you please come forward? Lindsay Jalen Adams. Virginia Lucille Adcox. Justina Ascenso. <laughs> Hi. 
Hamida Baidu. Modesto Balboran. <laughs> Nia Iman Blackwell. Hannah Lee Bodenheimer. <laughs> Sierra Cass Stevens. Ashton Chafin. <laughs> Diana Chepkin-Moy. Cameron Cobb. <laughs> Celicia Daniel Spikes. Kayla Marie Dunlap. Rose Marie Dunlap. Michelle Fusick. Brandy Nicole Galloway. Molly Ann Goodrich. <laughs> Elizabeth Jesse. Crystal Nicole Helton. <laughs> Ashley Lee Bowden. 
Erica Hudson. Bethany Grace Hunter. <laughs> Ashley Nicole Ibarra. Alex Johnson. <laughs> Brittany Lee Leonard. Haley Nicole Light. <laughs> Stacy K. Mabe. Christopher Shane McDonald. <laughs> Sierra Nicole McLaughlin. Lee Pardue Mitchell. <laughs> Jenny Myers. Lori Michelle Newman. <laughs> Jamie Maria Norwood. Denise Paredes. <laughs> Jay.
Janet Lee Parker. Dakota Perry. <laughs> Callie Brooke Prevet. Megan Lee Price. <laughs> Mackenzie Reed Pruitt. Ashley Annette Purvis. Tracy Parrish Reeves. Marlena Ringler. <laughs> Summer Sap. Dara Ruth Sharon. <laughs> Samantha Paige Snyder. Turner. Kadra Mac. Brandy Marie Warren.
Katherine Taylor Williams. Sabrina Morgan Wooling. <laughs> Kayla Marie Wright. Michael J. Wurzberger. <laughs> Carrie Ann Yokely. At this time, graduates, would you please turn on your lamps? And now would you please stand? Graduates, would you please repeat after me? In full knowledge, In full knowledge of, the of the obligations, I am undertaking. I, am undertaking. I, promise, I promise to care for the sick, care for the sick with, all the skill, with all the skill and understanding, and understanding I, possess, I possess without regard to race, race color, color, creed, creed politics, politics, social status, social status sparing, no sparing no effort to conserve life, to, conserve life, to, provide, support, to provide support when death is inevitable, when death is inevitable to, alleviate to alleviate suffering, suffering and to promote health. I will respect at all times, I will respect at all times. The, dignity the dignity and religious beliefs, and religious beliefs. Un of, patients under my care. of patients under my care, holding in confidence, holding in confidence. All, personal all personal information entrusted to me, entrusted to me. and reframing and from, from any action which might Endanger life, or Endanger life or health. I will endeavor, I will endeavor to, keep to keep my professional knowledge and skill, and skill at, the at the highest level and to give loyal support and, support and, cooperation, and cooperation to all members, to all members of, the of the health team. I will do my utmost to honor, to honor the, international the International Code of Ethics, of ethics applied, to applied to nursing and to uphold, and to uphold the integrity of the nurse. The of the nurse. Congratulations. <laughs> Family, friends, everyone, 
it is my honor and my pleasure to introduce to you our brand new nurses, our graduating fall 2021 associate degree nursing class. Again, congratulations. <laughs> We are so proud of you all. <laughs> yes, feel free to celebrate, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Immediately following um, our recession in just a moment, if you all feel free to join your graduates in the art gallery, if you exit these doors to the right, there are refreshments. Feel free to celebrate with your graduate. We will have pictures. Feel free to enjoy yourself. Graduates, again, this is your night. Enjoy. Thank you all. Yeah. <laughs>